All right, so this lesson for trigonometry is from 5.8 and for pre-calc from 4.8. This is on the application of trig functions. If you've been following along with all the lessons, the first half of this should really feel like a review just with some Sokotoa and Pythagorean word problems. And then at the end, we will learn one thing new called bearings. Okay, so looking at this question, it says find the height of a tower that is 150 feet from the line of sight that's looking up at a 60 degree angle. So if I'm going to draw, let's say I draw my towers right here. This is what I'm looking for. Now, this tower is 150 feet away from where the site is, where the person is looking up. So 150 feet. And it's at an angle of 60 degrees. Okay? So, with respect to 60 degrees, what is the tower? Opposite. Good, opposite. All right. Remember the long one across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Good. And then the one in between the right angle and the angle given is called your adjacent. Very nice. Okay. So, the two that I'm working with here is opposite. It's the one I want to find. Okay. And adjacent. Which trigonometric function works with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. Soka Toa, which stands for tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay? So theta, I know, I can plug this in and say tangent of 60 degrees equals, opposite is the one I do not know, I put an X, over adjacent I do know is 150. What do I do to get that X by itself? Good, multiply that 150 over to the other side. It should read 150 times tangent of 60 degrees equals X. And now you're ready to plug into your calculator. What mode should I be in when I'm working with uh, Sokotoa? Degrees. And if you have a hard time remembering that, the fact that you have a 60 degrees lets you know that my mode should be in degrees. All right. And if you plugged it in, it should look something like this in your calculator. Up here you can see we're in degree mode. 150 times tangent of 60. It's 259.807. And then what is my unit of measurement? Feet. All right. Done with this one. All right. So here is our next question. It says a kite string is 30 feet when it is 10 feet above the ground. What is the distance between the point underneath the kite and the person flying it? So let's say I have a kite right here. Okay. Oh, my triangle's a little sideways there. So let's say the person flying it is here. The kite string is 30 feet, okay? when it is 10 feet above the ground, okay? And they're asking you how far is the distance from being underneath the kite to the person flying it. So when they give you two sides and they're asking for a third, we use Pythagorean, okay? We don't need Sokotoa because there are no angles involved. So Pythagorean says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Who is going to be my c squared for this question? The 30, because the 30 is the hypotenuse, right? The, the only mandatory thing here is that your hypotenuse is your c, okay? So I can label a as my unknown and b as my 10, or reverse a and b and you'll still get the same answer, okay? So now we have a squared, plus 10 squared equals 30 squared, okay? 
I like going to my calculator all in one shot. So I'm going to try and isolate A before I start solving those numbers. So I'm going to subtract the 10 squared to both sides. And now I have A squared equals 30 squared minus 10 squared. And what would be my next step to get that A by itself? How do I get rid of the squared? Square root, okay? So I could leave A by itself as long as I square root the other side and say 30 squared minus 10 squared. And now I have the freedom to go to my calculator all in one step. So when you plug that in, it should look like this. You should get 28.28. .28. And what is my unit of measurement? It is still feet. Okay. If this is pre -cal, I'm going to encourage you to put three decimal, three numbers after the decimal. If it is trig, I'm okay with two. Okay. And the reason I say that is because in AP Calculus, they give you full credit for putting three numbers without or with rounding. Okay. If you do put two, you must uh, round properly. All right. So this next word problem is one that I would consider to be a little trickier. Okay. It says you ascend in a hot air balloon with your friend recording uh, 50 feet away. Okay, so let's say here you are in your hot air balloon. Okay, and then your friend is 50 feet away from where you took off. Okay, it says he starts recording with his camera at a 30 degree angle. So first he starts recording here at a 30 degree angle and then he records for a minute and after a minute you are at a 70 the whole thing 70 degree angle okay now the question is how much did you travel within one minute okay so within when you were at 30 degrees up and when you were 70 degrees up So hopefully where I want your thought process to go is that if I want this entire height, let's call this height A. We know we have enough information to find this height here. Okay, let's call this height B. With the 30 degrees, I can find height B. And then with the 70 degrees, I can find the entire height. Let's call that height C. So I have enough info with a 70 to find height C, and I have enough info with a 30 to solve for height B. If I do the height C minus the height B, I'll get my leftover, which is height A. All right? So for height C, I'm going to use, again, I have all three of these here would be opposites. These would be my thetas. Here's my 90 degrees. So over here is hypotenuse, which I do not need. And then I have adjacent down here. Okay. So if I'm working with C first, okay, I can say that tangent of 70 degrees is equal to opposite, which I don't know. We're going to call that C, over adjacent, which is 50. Okay. Multiply the 50 over. And that's going to give us C. Okay, I'll go to my calculator in a moment for that one. Now let's set up B as well. So B is the same exact tangent setup, but instead of with the entire 70, it's just this portion here with the 30. So tangent of 30 equals B over adjacent, which is 50. Multiply the 50 over. And then we will be able to have B. Okay. And now lastly, to find A, we're going to say the entire C minus the side B. Okay. Take a moment and use your calculator to get these numbers. 
All right, so in your calculator, when I plug in 50 tangent of 70 and 50 tangent of 30, your answer should look like this. Again, I'm still in degree mode, okay? So I'm going to plug those answers in. Oh, that shouldn't be a degree. Okay. And now if you have these calculators, don't feel the need to retype those numbers in. Scroll up, press enter, minus, scroll up, press enter. And you should have 108. And then our decimals may differ depending on how many decimals you place when you did the subtraction. But it should be somewhere around there. 108. 0.506, and again, we are talking about feet. All right, the next thing we're doing for 5.8, and the last thing you'll learn for this chapter is called bearings, okay? So a quick question to get your, your mind thinking about this, your address. Somebody tell me the beginning of their address. 1, 4, 3, 10, and then what's the next part? Southwest. Somebody tell me something other than southwest that they live in. Northwest. What's another possibility? West, east. How about southeast? And southwest, right? Question. Does anybody here, I heard northwest. Does anybody here live in west, north? Does that sound funny to you? I heard, what's the other one I heard? I heard. Right, but where do you live? What was yours? So I heard Southwest, right? Have you ever heard West South? No, right? So bearings is that portion of your, your address. The difference now is in between those two letters or words, Southwest and things like that, we're going to add a degree to dictate how much from south towards west, okay? So for bearings, your notation will always be either north or south first, then the degree of how much from north or south you go towards east or west. Does that make sense? If you like it visual, you will always start from the y-axis, north or south, going towards the x-axis, east or west. Okay, so let's give some examples. If I am in quadrant one, okay, what do you think the order would be for quadrant one? Let's say if I wanted to be 30 degrees into quadrant one, how would the order of the letters go? North, 30 degrees east. So again, you always travel from north or south. So in quadrant one, it will always say north first and then east. And to this point, you are traveling north 30 degrees east. Okay. Now, let's say I wanted to go 47 degrees into quadrant two. What would the order of my letters be for quadrant two? Beautiful. Quadrant two will always be north and then west. So if I said 47 degrees into quadrant two, that's how I would represent it. And again, it would always be north then west for quadrant two. Okay. How about if I wanted to go 15 degrees into quadrant three? How would I say the letters? What order? South and then? South 15 degrees west. So south 15 degrees west. Quadrant three is always south going towards west. Okay. And lastly, quadrant four. Let's say I wanted to go... 29 degrees into quadrant four. Good. South, 
29 degrees east. So maybe this is a good side note you can make yourself based off the quadrants. Okay. Quadrant 1 will always be north to east. Quadrant 2 will always be north to west. Quadrant 3 will be south to west. And then quadrant 4 will be south to east. All right, so let's take a look at this image, okay? And I want to find the bearing for each of these four spots, okay? For A, A lies in quadrant 1. And I know that in quadrant 1, based off my previous work, that quadrant 1 should go from north to to east. So are they being nice to us in quadrant one or are they trying to trick us? They're trying to trick us. Good. So what do I have to do in order to find my north to east? Right. I need to take a moment and say 90 degrees minus 10 degrees, which gives me 80 degrees. And now I can answer for point A. What is point A? Nice. North, 80 degrees east. Okay. For B, B lies in quadrant two. Are they being nice to me in quadrant two or are they trying to trick me? They're being nice because in quadrant two, I have to go from north towards east and that's exactly what they gave me. So what is the answer for B? North, 30 degrees west. Okay. C. C lies in quadrant three. Where should I be starting from in quadrant three? South. So they're trying to trick me. They're being mean. Okay. So I have to take a moment and find from south towards west. So what do I do? Nice. 90 minus 70, which gives me 20 degrees. So what is my answer for C? Nice. Starting at south, going 20 degrees towards west. Okay. And lastly, letter D. D is in quadrant four. Where should I be starting from in quadrant four? Good. And they did start from south. So what is my answer for quadrant four, for D? South, 20 degrees towards east. All right, and we are done with this question. So let's look at this last word problem that kind of takes everything we've talked about today and puts it all together. It talks about bearings, it talks about Pythagorean, and it talks about Sokotoa, okay? So it says, a sailboat leaves the entrance of a harbor. So here's my harbor right here drawn in black. And it travels 30 miles out, going north 40 degrees towards east. Does that make sense? Let me put my little E here. Then once the boat has traveled those 30 miles, the boat then turns 90 degrees clockwise, okay? And travels for 20 miles, going south 50 degrees east. And another color, let me draw that one. Every time they mention a new bearing, you draw that new bearing according to your location. So let's say I draw another one. When I turn 90 degrees, we went south, and then we went towards east 50 degrees, okay? So I want you to think if any of you have ever gone on a boat in the Keys or anything like that, these are the mechanics within your GPS system telling you how much to go to a certain direction, okay? Now, after you travel those 20 miles, the question is, your boat is in that spot. How far is the boat from the harbor? Let's look at that first question. They are asking me, how far is my boat from the harbor? So I've got two sides given, and I want to know the third. What do you think I'm going to use? Pythagorean. Beautiful. So if I'm doing Pythagorean, remember your hypotenuse has to be C. So this distance that you're actually looking for is across the 90 degree angle. So I'm looking for C. So I have A squared plus B squared 
equals c squared, where my a and my b are the 20 and the 30. And what I'm looking for, this distance, is going to be my c. Okay? So 30 squared plus 20 squared equals c squared. All I have to do now is get c by itself. How do I get c by itself? Good. Square root. All right, so if you plug that in your calculator, you should get 36.055, and we are talking about miles. Okay, so the boat is currently 36.055 miles away from the harbor. Okay, now the next question says, what is the bearing of the boat from the harbor? So the boat is here. Okay, if I want to know the bearing of the boat from the harbor, I need to find out, remember, we're in quadrant one still. So from north towards the boat, I need to know what that theta is in order to say north, whatever that theta is, east. Okay, so so far I know I'm in quadrant one. So it's going to be north, some degrees, east. Okay, now I do have this first portion up top that is 40 degrees. What do you think I'm going to have to do to be able to find that total theta? Well, if I subtract 40 from 90, I'm automatically going to get, assuming the boat is directly on east. So remember, I drew this sketch. I don't know if 20 miles really looks like this much, this much, or maybe even this much. Okay, do you guys see that this triangle where the boat is made its own little angle right here? How can I find that little angle? Um, using the inverse. Beautiful. Using Sokotoa the inverse way, right? So if this is the theta that I'm going to look for, okay, what do I have given to me? What is this guy over here, 20? Good. He's opposite. And then this long side is hypotenuse. So what does that make 30? Adjacent. Which trig function works with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. Toa. Good. So I have tangent of some theta equals opposite, which is 20 over adjacent, which is 30. Now, how do I get that theta by itself? Good, guys. Inverse tangent. Okay. Take a moment and plug that in. You're pressing second tangent. And then you're going to put 20 over 30. Again, making sure you are in degree mode. When you plug that in your calculator, it should look something like this, 33.69, okay? Now, is that 33.69 the theta I'm going to plug in here? Look here. Well, remember, I'm going north towards this line, right? So if this portion right here is the 33.69, and I have this 40 here, I need to make sure that I add the 40 degrees to it, okay? So you should get 73.69 is this full degree from north going to where the boat is. And I'm still in quadrant one, so it is north, 73 and some degrees towards east. And that is your final answer.